Hey there, and welcome to the first episode of Paint with a Pint. I am your instructor, Janet Hockman, and today we are going to be painting this beautiful beach landscape based on one of my favorite places on the Oregon coast, Sunset Beach. To begin, please make sure that you check out the description for this video below where you can find the materials list for all of the painting materials you'll need to create this painting. And you can also check out my episode that's specifically about all of the materials that I use for paint with a pint. To briefly go over those, you're going to need a 16 by 20 or whatever standard size pre-prepped canvas that you'd like, a palette or a plate of paint, including the colors listed in the materials for this painting. I have four different size brushes that I will be using today, a one inch, a three quarters, a half inch and a quarter inch brush, and I'll be letting you know what size to use and when. You will need some paper towel and a cup to rinse out your brushes in between steps. And of course, going along with our theme, paint with a pint, you would like to have a pint of your favorite beverage alongside of you. And I always like to say, use this pint to remind yourself that this process is meant to be fun. So every time you take a sip, just relax, enjoy yourself, and make something creative. So to begin, I'm going to take my one inch brush and I'm gonna slide some white paint to the side and then I'm going to just dip a little bit of blue in with that because the, what we're trying to create is a sky blue. So whatever shade of light blue you end up with, will be perfectly fine. So something along those lines. Once I get something that I'm about happy with, I'm going to just look at my canvas and find about a halfway point, maybe even a little bit below halfway. And I'm going to just draw a line that goes straight across, including the sides. I'm going to encourage you to paint the sides of your canvas as well because it looks really nice if you don't have a frame and you just want to get it hung up on the wall when you're all done. Um, it's, it's a nice touch to the sides of the canvas. So now that I have that drawn out, I'm just going to continue to take my light blue paint and everything above this line, I am just going to paint this sky blue. And don't be afraid to mix some of the white and the blue together from side to side on your canvas. It will give you this streaky effect that the clouds that, um, are moving in the sky, so it creates some movement and a little bit of depth to your painting. out on my canvas I'm going to allow some time for that to dry and in the meantime I'm going to rinse out my one inch brush so I'll just swish that around in my jar and I may come back to it I may not I don't know but I'm going to let it just rest in there and in the meantime I'm going to grab my uh, three quarters brush and I'm going to mix this time a little bit of my raw sienna and my burnt sienna, so this kind of dark yellow and brown, with some white. And what I'm trying to create is this sandy color. Um, so I'll pull a little bit of that aside, a little bit of each, and then take some white, pull that aside as well. And just mix those together until you get kind of like a light brown, light sandy color, whatever you're happy with. And then I'm going to take about three fingers, three to four, four fingers, and I'm going to place it at the bottom of the sky. And wherever my fourth finger lies, I'm going to just make a mark right um, underneath that fourth finger. 
and of course don't forget your sides and I'm going to draw a line doesn't need to be perfect that goes straight across don't forget the other side and now everything below that line I want to paint a my whatever chosen sandy color so now you want to take a moment again don't forget your sides you can also take a moment to um, paint the bottom of your canvas either just by lifting it up and painting it or you can flip it upside down um, you might want to wait for the top to dry so of course if you're at home you might have a little bit more time to let that dry you can also use a blow dryer to speed things up but I'm going to give you a chance to go ahead and get the bottom um, portion of that canvas painted this sandy color paint the lower section of our canvas with this sandy um, yellowish brown color I'm going to take my three quarters brush I don't need it anymore so I'm going to go ahead and just rinse it out and now I'm going to take my half inch brush and we're going to be focusing on this middle portion of our canvas which is going to be the ocean so <clears throat> I'm going to take um, blue and a little bit of black paint goes a long way. So you don't need a ton of it, um, but you want it to be kind of this darker blue, almost like a bluish gray, if you will. So I'm going to just push some of this blue aside, just a wee little bit of black. I'm not using very much and I'm going to mix that together until I start to get a darker blue. Then I can add a wee little bit more black. If it gets too dark, then add more blue. But it is a lot easier to um, slowly get darker than to start dark and then try to lighten it up. Okay, so once I get a color that I'm pretty happy with to begin, I'm going to actually be overlapping the top of, or I'm sorry, the bottom of the sky just a wee little bit. And that part is not dry yet, so it is going to mix in just a little bit. But I want to overlap just a wee little bit of the sky, and I'm going to just draw a line that goes straight across. And trust me, you're human. Um, your body is, you know, moving, so it's not going to be a perfect line. Um, so for your, for you perfectionists out there, you got to loosen up just a little bit. Um, but we can go back in and touch that up. You can also use tape. You can um, use a little bit of masking tape, tape it off to get a straight line, and then pull it off. Uh, that works really well. Um, I prefer to just do it freehand. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit more natural to me, but um, once you get that line marked out, that horizon line, then everything below that line is going to be painted this dark ocean blue. So, I want to go ahead and just carefully take my time to um, get this all filled in. So, anything that's left that is white, we are going to be painting blue. So, I'll give you a second to take your time. Um, again, you want it to be straight, but it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. If you want, use tape, but I am going to give you some time to just work on getting this all filled in.
now that you've had a chance to um, get the dark blue ocean water in there using the same brush, so I'm using a half inch brush, I'm just going to now dip into a little bit of my lighter blue and just where the water hits the sand, I'm just going to go in a uh, horizontal back and forth motion to get some of those waves kind of crashing up over the sand. So I want that lighter blue, maybe even a little bit of white, allow it to kind of mix together. You can even kind of move in like an M or yeah, kind of like a wavy, just kind of a wavy line. Now you can just take some white and start to just tap your brush onto the surface. So we're just kind of making some waves crashing onto the beach. So I'm just tapping my brush over the where the water meets the sand. Really just kind of have fun with this. You know, there's there's no perfect wave. So just take a little bit of white and if the blue is blending into it, let it be. Let it crash over you. Just let it be. with them then we are going to rinse out our brush once again you don't need the three quarters um, we're actually going to go back to um, I'm sorry you don't need a half inch I'm going to go back to the the brush the three quarters brush which is the same one that I used for the sand because now we're going to start to paint in the sand dunes so I'm just going I'm just drying off my brush a little bit and I'm going to mix, go back to mixing up. Um, you can see how messy my palette is. That's why I like to keep an extra palette um, so that I have more room to mix. But I wanna go back to this sandy color. So I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of raw sienna, burnt sienna. Mix up that sandy color again. Now, when I do this, you want to make sure that the water is dry. So take a moment to um, allow that to dry. And I'm going to paint kind of like, I think you can kind of think of like a pizza shape, but I want you to kind of envision that there is a sand dune over here in the corner. I'm just going to cover up some of that water and I can even take it a little bit higher. to dry. I've touched up the water. Um, it's, as, it's as good as it's going to be for right now. Um, I'm going to paint the birds in the sky because this whole area is dry already. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, um, I'm going to go ahead and paint some birds. So you'll notice in the original painting um, that I created, there are five birds flying in the sky in the general upper right hand side of the 
um, painting. Now, there are different ways of painting birds. You can do the classic um, V shape, which I think is what I'm going to use today. You can use an M shape. Um, you can get really detailed with your birds um, by creating some that have their wings flying up, some that have their wings flying down. Um, and this, it's kind of like an X or um, like an S with a line through it. Um, so there's different ways that you can that you can create your birds, but for these, uh, for paint with a pint, especially my live classes that I do in person, um, whether it be at a winery or a brewery, <clears throat> I'd like to keep it as simple as possible. So um, I'm going to be using my quarter inch brush. It is my smallest brush, and I'm just going to be using white paint. And for the sake of keeping this one simple, I'm just going to dip into white, and I'm going to do the classic V shape. Um, about right here in this area. You don't want too much paint on your brush when you do this. Um, you want to kind of keep it nice and simple. You can see those first two that I did there, I had a lot of paint on my brush. So those ones are standing out a little bit more. So I'm just giving off the idea that there are birds flying in the distance. Again, um, no need to get really technical with this. You can, but um, for paint with a pint, I want you to just have fun and relax. Okay, now that we had some time to let um, all of the paint dry, we are going to start to paint the grass and the dunes and the sand dunes. So, um, you have some options for creating different shades of green. You don't want to just use the same exact color over and over again because it really doesn't give it any depth and it um, can just kind of end up looking a little dull. So I'm using my quarter inch brush, the same one I used for the birds. I just rinsed it out in my water cup and dried it off. Now I'm going to mix up a few different shades of green. So. Um, Thalo green, green oxide. I'm going to take some of the green oxide and just pull it aside anywhere that I have a little spot free on my palette. And I'm going to mix it with the raw sienna. So that's one shade of green I can use that's just not straight out of the bottle. Um, I can also take thalo green and a little bit of green oxide and mix those two together for a darker green. You could even add some burnt sienna into that if you want a darker green. So there's two colors that we have that are something other than just straight out of the bottle. And you want to try and use colors that are mixed because it makes your painting more interesting. If you're using colors that are just straight out of the bottle, other than maybe say white, um, you're going to get a painting that's maybe uh, for lack of a better term, doll or not as interesting as it could be. So now that I have just a couple of colors, and feel free to play around, take some time to play around with mixing those colors, that can be really the fun part of painting. Um, mix up a few different shades of green, lighter green, darker green, um, whatever you are satisfied with. And then I'm going to take my brush, not a whole lot of paint on it, um, and I'm going to start by just kind of flicking my brush upwards. And I'm going to do this very light, but I'm going to do this over and over and over and over again until I fill up that whole area of the sand dune with some grass. So allow it to go up and over the edge of the sand dune. Don't forget about the sides of your painting. If you chose to paint the sides of your painting, make sure that you include that as well. And I just kind of, to keep it fresh, um, instead of focusing on just one spot over and over again, I like to bounce both, you know, both sides back and forth. 
And this is a little bit time consuming. So take your time, you know, relax, drink your pint, um, and allow yourself to just really have fun. What we're going for is um, lots of grass that fills up those sand dunes. So I'll give you some time to go ahead and um, paint that grass. grass into the dunes, make any touch-ups that you'd like, let it dry, and then it is ready to hang up on your wall. If you are interested in purchasing this painting or paintings like it that I have created, check out my website paintwithapint.com. You can also set up any um, live show that you would like me to do at a local uh, brewery or winery. Um, I also do private classes at homes, so um, feel free to contact me on my website. I also have a Facebook page, Paint with a Pint Night, so you can find me there. And um, if you liked anything about this video, please like, comment, and share, and subscribe. Um, and I greatly look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Paint with a Pint. Thanks so much and happy painting.